we did have a room change, so if people come in, we'll uh, maybe leave some time for questions at the end. But um, thank you for coming. I am Kendall Nelson. I'm a senior upstream developer advocate at the Open Infrastructure Foundation. I have been an open source contributor since 2015 when I started working on OpenStack, and in 2019, I got involved in the Kubernetes community as well. I do a lot of talks, different places, <laughs> so if you go search for me on YouTube, I've talked about how important mentorship is and taking care of your open source community before. Uh, I really enjoy Doctor Who and Harry Potter, and I love traveling, especially when it involves food, so Korea's been awesome. Um, and I also do a lot of running to offset the food consumption. <laughs> so, um, what is the UPP, the University Partnership Program? Well, the University Partnership Program started as a collaboration between the Open Infrastructure Foundation, our Open Infra projects, and universities. So the focus is generally to get more students exposed and to and working on open source early because there are endless benefits for open source overall, for the ecosystem of open source projects, the projects that are in <laughs> that ecosystem, and also for the students themselves. Uh, if you want to talk more about the benefits, I'm happy to do that after, but I could probably spend two hours talking about that, so that's not the focus for today. Uh, we do finally have a web page on the Open Infra site, uh, which is very exciting. You can check out the URL at the bottom, and I will, I promise to get my slides uploaded so that you all can see them um, and access the links and other information in this presentation. So, how do you get started with the University Partnership Program? How do you get that set up? Well, unfortunately, I am the bottleneck right now. <laughs> Long story short, it, you kind of have to go through me right now. I, uh, a lot of our partnerships have formed very organically over the years. The very first one, which I will talk about, was actually formed from a student that had graduated from the university and the university reached out to them looking for open source projects to work on because the university knew that he was involved in open source. And I worked with him to find projects for students to work on there, and it kind of grew from that. And I realized how important getting open source projects in front of students is, and all of the good that can be done for all of the world, basically. I would love to work on a more formalized process, like a form or something. Um, but currently, all you need to do, the process is really simple, you just reach out to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get this more formalized down the road with a, a form, but one of the more crucial details that I'm trying to ensure is that the universities that we do end up working with are associate members of the Open Infrastructure Foundation, which is a free tier membership. It's for universities and nonprofits and research organizations. And it's just a, yes, we're partners. We are working towards a common goal. Let's keep doing that and you exchange some logos and that's the end of it. It's very easy. Um, and we have a lot of the universities that are in the partnership program right now are associate members. There's only two that are not, I believe, but I'm working on it 100% soon. Um, most importantly, though, advocating. So if there are courses at a university you attend or know of that might be interested in having open source projects, usually these are course long or semester long courses, or maybe they're two semesters. Um, that's often a good fit because it does take a little while to get up and running and find your feet in open source. Um, but having the professor reach out to me, connecting me with professors, that's worked before. Um, that's actually one of the newest partnerships that we formed um, is with uh, a university in Seattle. I did a talk about mentorship in open source at an event that was in Seattle and the student was attending and they're like, hey, you should talk to my professor. Let me introduce you to my dean. And I was like, okay. And so now I have four students from that university 
working on various open source projects. Well, three, soon to be four. <laughs> um, if there are professors I can talk to or you want information, please reach out to my email address. I also have it on the last slide. And I have business cards if you want to come up and get one of those at the end. If there isn't a particular course that will work, there's always the option of an independent study. Some universities have a structure for internships, which I will kind of get into as examples in a little bit here. But we really focus on doing what works for the university, which may not be scalable in the long run, but right now we just want to build these partnerships and get the ball rolling. So uh, any questions you have, please let me know. And if all else fails, if we can't get a formal <laughs> university partnership program rolling, you can still contribute to open source as a student or an individual. You don't need to be doing it on behalf of a community or a company, rather. Um, there are a lot of helpful links here about that give information about how to get started contributing in our open infrastructure projects. So OpenStack is definitely the most established one, but Kata Containers, Starling X, and Zool all have really good developer documentation as well. All the communities are very welcoming to new contributors. So if you um, want to get involved, this is a really good place to start. And if you wanted to reach out to me, I can also help you um, uh, make introductions to folks in the community as well. So. Hopping into examples of the various partnerships we have going on right now. This is not a comprehensive set. There are many partnerships that we have that I don't have slides for. This is just some ideas to give you a better idea of how it works. So first up, we have Boston University. They have two different courses that they run that we work with them on. So the first one is the Fundamentals of Cloud Computing. And that's usually a like first four years of your computer science degree course that students take, um, usually in their third or fourth year. So they're a little bit more experienced. They have the basic knowledge of how to, can, uh, how to interact with a computer. Um, the projects that we've had participate in that particular course before are Kata Containers and OpenStack. Um, it, Right now, this is actually just getting started, which is very exciting. And we again have a project from Kata Containers and an OpenStack project proposed. So we'll have more students coming from Boston University and the community here shortly. Um, and the other course is their senior design course, which is taught by a different professor. So I work with more than one professor at this university. And that one is really interesting because it actually runs two semesters. So the projects that we get um, submitted from the community are bigger pieces of work. And the way that is set up, too, is really interesting because it, the, the context for the course is that the group of students work together on a particular project. And the kind of plot or story that they work through is that they, they have funding from a VC and they're like building this piece of technology. So it, they get to learn a lot about the different roles in the industry that they could have. So not just a developer, it might also be a project manager or those sorts of roles and they rotate through them throughout the course of the semester. So that's something that I found really interesting and different from many other universities. You can also see a quote from a student that went through the university partnership program and worked on OpenStack, specifically Manila, as a part of her education. And she ended up being hired by Red Hat after because she made a connection with her mentors and was interested in continuing to work in OpenStack and open source. And yeah, it was, it's very cool to see her as a mentor now. Um, so she started as a mentee and now has grown into the, the mentorship role. Um, Manila is really good at, at doing that. They've like created a community of mentees becoming mentors. So I would love to get that going in more of our projects. Um, so the next university is a very, very different model from Boston University. 
The duration varies a lot uh, based on the graduation dates for an individual student. So they're actually employed by the Oregon State University Open Source Lab. And usually it's just one or two interns at a time, but the um, like faculty member that works in that lab runs an OpenStack cloud at the university. And so the student will get um, a lot of experience managing and operating an OpenStack cloud in addition to contributing. So that is, is very, very different from just working on development for the course of a semester. So some of the students have been around for even two years, which is a really good experience because they get a long time to really find their feet, figure out what they're doing, and um, from there they are on their way to being like a full-time contributor. Um, and if they wanted to stay working on OpenStack, it'd be much easier to get a job because they have two years of experience working on OpenStack already. And Oregon State University is also an associate member. Yay. Um, next up, we have North Dakota State University. They have one course, and this one is similar to Boston University, the first example I gave. Theirs runs from January to May, instead of the, the first semester of the year, September to December. Um, and we've had both Kata Containers and OpenStack participate in this one as well. I would love to get more projects involved, Zool and Starling X, um, but it always comes down to being able to find mentors and good projects for the students to work on. It is a little bit of a time commitment for the mentors, and I try to communicate that up front that uh, what the expectations are but there's a lot of variability based on the group of students you have too because I have done mentoring and basically had to put zero effort in the students figured it all out they like work together I met with them like every other week and that was all they needed just like a little extra help getting attention on their code reviews but then I've also had students where like, I had to meet with them every week and chat with them in between. And I basically had to set homework for them and be like, you should try to get this done by next week and like structure it a lot. So it really depends on the group of students. And unfortunately, you don't know who they are until you start working with them. But I think um, courses like this one where you have a group of students working together is generally more successful because they end up peer mentoring, which is uh, really important and a good skill to have that transfers into the real world when you go and work on a team at, say, Microsoft or Red Hat or wherever. Because um, a lot of students struggle with um, moving from, uh, you, you get an assignment and you have to work on it alone, and you can't consult the internet, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you write it from start to finish, and don't have to integrate with anything, and, and then that is nothing like how it actually works in the real world. So that's another benefit of these university partnerships. They get actual, concrete, real world experience, um, and are better set up to be uh, valuable employees when they're hired. The last example I think I have today, maybe there's one more, I can't remember, <laughs> um, is Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, I've worked with them twice now, actually. Uh, for the last two summers, they do a shorter course, which is also kind of a hybrid does internship thing. Um, but I've worked with two different campuses. The first one was uh, a US-based campus, and this last summer we actually worked with a group of students in Qatar, so that was really cool. Um, and all of the projects really, except for one proposal, have been focused on OpenStack projects. Uh, that one proposal was a little bit of a crossover. It was Kubernetes, but it was the uh, the cloud provider within Kubernetes that is focused on OpenStack integration. So um, it's been really cool to work with the um, instructor. He isn't actually a full-time professor. He works at Microsoft full-time, and then he does this in his 
abundance of spare time that he doesn't actually have. Uh, um, but it's been a really good partnership and I hope to get Carnegie Mellon on board as an associate member soon and continue to grow this program as well. Oh, there is another example, okay. <laughs> so this one is also very different from like the traditional North Dakota State University and Boston University examples. So Valencia College, I honestly don't even know how this partnership started, but they're um, mostly internships. So Valencia College has a like department within the university that um, basically creates internships. They like write out documents. Um, and so they're time boxed for the students, usually a one semester, maybe longer. Um, and occasionally it's more than one student working on like one contract that gets drafted. Um, but it's, it, it's very different because they get school credit instead of being paid like a normal internship or like what I think of an internship anyway. They're not all paid. Um, but yeah, so to, to get school credit, I think, is really valuable for the student in addition to everything that they're learning throughout the course of working on the open source projects. Um, they're an associate member, they just organized a hackathon. This professor is awesome. I would love to work with more professors like him that are very, very driven. Um, but he's been really happy with the skills that his students have been learning and as part of their internship they have to do a final presentation and record it so if you're interested in hearing about the experiences from those students they are also on our um, YouTube channel uh, the Open Infrastructure Foundation YouTube channel um, and they're linked from the university partnership page as well. Data, because who doesn't love data? So this morning during keynotes, I put this beautiful chart together. <laughs> um, I thought it was really interesting to see like how popular the different projects are at the different uh, universities, but also that isn't always exactly an accurate statement because it has to do with the projects themselves having time to do the mentoring. Like I said, it's kind of a time commitment sometimes, so. Um, it's been really cool to see Kata be successful, um, but obviously they like the more uh, semester scoped projects as opposed to more ongoing internships, um, which is really interesting. And hopefully at some point I will have Starnax and Zool in this chart as well. But since they haven't done any um, university partnership program mentoring, I don't have them represented here yet. Uh, the other thing I think I really want to do with this is to do a mapping that includes how many patches the students push and how many patches the students land and see how successful some of these programs are over others. Um, it's going to be a little bit like comparing apples to oranges because an internship compared to a course is quite different, but I still think that there's value in that analyzation. So. If you're interested in that, continue coming to talks like this by me, and then you'll see the data eventually. <laughs> um, so what are we hoping for in the future? More universities. We want to get more universities involved. And right now, most of the program is focused on US universities, which is fine, but I think that there is definitely a global market for hiring open source developers. And so working with universities in Europe, Asia, and Africa are definitely my focus right now. While I wouldn't say no to more US universities, I am actively seeking out universities in other areas of the world to create partnerships and get students working on open source. So. There are four that I've kind of had ongoing conversations with. We just haven't been able to make it work yet. Specifically, Konkuk University here in Korea, University of Jos in Nigeria, University of West Attica, which is in Greece, and the Technical University of Dresden in Germany, which I hope to actually visit later this year. I'm attending a conference 
in Dresden at the end of October, and hopefully I can say hi to the professor in person and maybe go talk to her class. Um, but if you have any advice uh, on how to better network with non-US universities, I am all ears. I would really, really like to know if there's maybe a like cultural difference that I'm not understanding. Like I went through university in the US, so I understand how those programs work. Um, but maybe there's something I'm missing, something I don't understand that's stopping me from being successful making connections with universities outside of the US. Um, one other group that I think is really important and I want to point out before we get to the end of the session here today, and I will have a couple minutes for questions, assuming I'm timekeeping correctly, um, is this FLOSS mentoring group that I am a part of and helped create. So. This group formed out of a panel I was on in, uh, that was actually at a virtual event originally. There was a symposium that was hosted by a university in California, and they are very passionate about open source. They actually have their own open source uh, program office at the university. They were one of 12 universities that um, got money from a grant to build a open source program office and try to get more open source everywhere being used by the university and being in front of students and getting them engaged and aware. Um, so that was very cool. And from that, uh, we, we got to the end of our like panel Q&A and we're like, actually, we really want to keep talking about this topic. So we submitted like the same CFP abstract again to another uh, session and that was or, uh, another event and that was what happened earlier this year in Seattle in April how I met the student that was like super into this idea um, and since then we've been meeting monthly and the meetings are open to anyone the actual meeting time and day of the month varies based on availability from month to month. So if you want to be there, voice your opinion. There's usually a poll to pick a date. Um, but we focus on a lot of different topics, um, the experiences of students and mentees, what they hope to get out of mentorship, what we can do to support them better, um, challenges that they may have faced that we didn't foresee. We have gotten uh, mentor perspective, university perspective. We're hoping to get some open source community representative on calls in the future. And all of this like discussion is moving towards building resources to help support others thinking about starting their own mentorship programs, whether that's at a university or, I don't know, through an organization. Um, I think mentorship is really important and mentorship in open source is crucial to the health of a lot of communities, continuing to grow them and increasing diversity and just, just the benefits are endless. Like I said at the beginning, I could talk about the benefits of it for hours. 